Come, people of God, take refuge in the Lord, who listens when we cry out, who rescues us when we call, who leads and guides us according to his unfailing love. God, you hold our lives in your hands, and we come to worship together. Good morning, beloved of Mayo Memorial United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Amy Chapman. What a joy it is to welcome you into this holy and sacred space today as we come seeking to worship God in spirit and in truth. If you are visiting here with us at Mayo Church, if you're online or if this is your first time with us here in person, we hope that you got a bulletin in the narthex to help guide you in our time of worship. And uh, we hope that you will take a visitor card and just put that in the offering so that we can follow up with you and see how we can connect with you as part of our congregation. We're a, ch we're a church who loves God and who loves people and nothing else matters. And we gather in that spirit here today, welcoming one another. I invite you, if you would, to turn to the first part of your bulletin on your call to worship from John 14. And if you would respond together in the bold print today. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus Christ, the Son. For God has prepared something new for us, the reign of Christ that we have glimpsed here and now. For this is Christ's commandment, that we love one another. Christ has shown us the way, the truth, and the life. For everyone will know that we are Christ's disciples if we have love for one another. Amen. Let us pray together. O oh God of all creation, become for us once again the solid foundation upon which we build our daily lives. God, we gather before you on this, the first day of the week, to align ourselves, align our lives to the strong and sure teachings and to the life of Jesus Christ, who is our cornerstone. God, receive our praise and thanksgiving as expressions of our faith and our love. We come to you, O Lord, as people who desire to learn and to serve like Christ. We come to you ready to receive your blessing and your direction in our lives today. Holy Spirit, rest upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our first hymn of praise today is the song, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, number 110 in the United Methodist Hymnal. If you'll turn there with me and if you'll stand and sing in praise today.
Amen. Woo! You may be seated. That's like a battle cry, isn't it? I love that. One little word shall fail him. That's not a little word. That's the word, the name above every name. That at every at the sound of the name of Jesus, the Christ, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Thanks be to God. Are there any children who'd like to be dismissed this morning for children's worship and for Sunday school? You're welcome to follow Miss Donna down, and she will bring you back up since today is our communion Sunday. Let's give thanks to God and bless our children today who are here, whether you're here in the sanctuary or whether you're downstairs in Sunday school. Thanks be to God for our children. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Grace and peace and welcome to our service this morning. The announcements, uh, our, our general announcements, which are on the back page of your bulletin, uh, the Mountain Mission, did that ever come? Or is it tomorrow? The 15th? Yes. Thank you. All right, the Mountain Mission will be here on the 15th. If you have anything you'd like to donate, you can take it to the annex, and it would all be much appreciated. Uh, birthdays. I forgot birthdays last week, and it bothered me so much. <laughs> I took my bulletin home and highlighted them, and stuck at my Bible so I'd remember them this week. So last week was Mary's birthday on the 1st. Samuel Sloan's was on the 4th. Ashley Adams was on the 6th. Brenda's, Brenda Caudill, is May the 10th. And Ashton Adams is May the 11th. So happy birthday to all you guys. Um, we move on to our time of prayer. think yeah are there any prayer concerns you'd like to lift before the church family this morning yes he does they can't hear you I've been told <laughs> and I'm not this is not my regular job so. <laughs> thank you for all your prayers please remember me and my family and thank you for praying for a, a good prom night last night with my youngest one. He had a real good time, and, and hopefully everybody used good choices. And hopefully that next weekend is Principal's prom this coming Saturday. And also, please remember the kids. They're starting their, their tests this coming Wednesday. I know Branson starts his Wednesday on my birthday. So, you know, we're hoping for the best there with all of the kids everywhere, you know. And um, uh, uh, we went to uh, my service for the, my first cousin, and all that went well. And uh, appreciate your prayers there and for all my family. And, oh, my Aunt Annalie is going to have her arm uh, surgery this coming Wednesday. They've upped it two weeks, and she's in Ohio. Her name's Annalie, and uh, uh, please pray for her. She's uh, in her 80s, and thank you. Friends, while you're making your way back here, continue to please remember my Aunt Gwen in your prayers. Um, she's been uh, three weeks now in the hospital in the behavioral unit at King's Daughters, and it's um, very discouraging. But we just want her to be well, pray for her care team and for her family. Remember my mom as well. She had a virus this week. Uh, Joanne is her name. So Aunt Gwen McKenzie, Joanne Thompson, Tammy Barker had a, a virus. I know several other people have contacted me and said that they had been battling illness. So remember all who are, who are sick today. Um, I'd like to lift up a friend from high school. Uh, she's been in and out of the hospital for the past two weeks. Um, <clears throat> she's having a horrible time anyway. She lives uh, with chronic pain like myself and now has something going on with her lungs and um, she's really frightened. So if, her name is pa uh, Pat Lucy. Uh, like to, well, a couple things I'm grateful of. Uh, I made it to Legal 60 Monday, and uh, yeah, uh, that, that's great. 
I don't want to sound too, but uh, I'm just going downhill. And it's been going on a long time. The depression is killing me, and I've been praying and praying. I don't usually pray for myself. So I figure I need a team effort on this one. And, uh, and if things ain't, ain't, ain't looking up, I can't, I can't function. I flat can't function. Uh, I, I don't know how to turn it around. I'm trying, but maybe I need, need to, a few more people praying. Thank you. Nothing wrong for praying for yourself. I do it every day. <laughs> uh, I would like everyone to pray for my grandson. Carter's having his tonsils and adenoids taken out tomorrow morning, so just lift him up in prayer. I have two prayer requests. Both of them are for friends of mine. First one is for Bill Bob Callahan. They don't know if it's a mass on the inside of his ear or his fluids build up, so he asked me to have him mentioned in prayer this morning. Also pray for this friend of mine. He's a Campbell, David Campbell. He has a lot of heart issues, and they've transferred him out of the hospital. And he said, would you have prayer for me at church? I said, I said okay. He said, I was open request, and both of them said yes. Said both of them said they greatly appreciate the chair, prayers of the church. David Campbell, and what was the other name? David Campbell. Bill Bob Callahan. Anybody else? Uh, there was a notice on Facebook that that sent Donna Lewis to the hospital last week. She has a really bad heart condition, so not last week, last night. So please continue to lift up Donna and her husband, Gary. And Janice Gray mm -hmm. uh, has had a recurrence of her cancer, and it's not, not a good situation. Uh, our her prayer hymn this morning are, is, oh wait, unspoken request. Just know that God sees and God knows. Uh, Prayer hymn this morning is How Great Thou Art, number 77, um, in your hymnals. And as always, the altar is open uh, if you would like to come pray at the altar.
Lord be with you. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know thy Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leadeth to eternal life. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Together let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, if that's you calling, we're here to answer. We thank you, God, for the ways that you ring your voice into our lives, that you wake us up with the sound of your voice, that you call us, O oh Lord, to follow you. And God, we have come because you are the way. God, we have come because we we need a way to follow. We are lost without your presence, Lord. And so, God, we need you. We need you in this hour, and we need you in every hour that is to come. Have mercy on us, Jesus Christ. Abide with us in these moments of prayer as we come seeking God to give you praise and glory and honor. God, we come with our lives as empty and as broken as they are, knowing, God, that only you can fill us with the joy of everlasting life. And so, God, we come because where else do we go? You have the words of life. And so, God, speak to us now in this holy conversation of prayer. Speak to us with your peace. Breathe on us the breath of God. Speak to us, O oh God, with your wisdom, with your direction, with your guiding hand. We are yours, O oh God, and you are ours. And so, God, we pray together for this beloved community for those who are gathered here in worship as part of the body of Christ. We pray for those in this town, our neighbors. We pray for all people everywhere who have come to worship today. We pray, O oh God, for your beloved church, your bride, whom you have chosen, that we might be one together, just as you and the Father are one Lord, make us one. God, we pray for the world that you so loved, that you gave your only son for our sin to be delivered into everlasting life. God, we pray for the people that we know by name, knowing, God, that you know them even more tenderly that you know them even more intimately. We ask, oh God, that you would give them strength today, that you would show us, oh God, ways that we can be Jesus to them here and now. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer today for Brenda Cottle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, hear our prayer for our youth in our community, for this end of the year season as we prepare for prom and celebrations and graduation. God, be our guide and be our shield for our youth and children for the end of this school year, for those who are pre preparing, oh God to face a new season of life for our youth and our children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, for Gwen McKenzie, for Tammy Barker, for Joanne Thompson, 
for Donna Lewis, for Janice Gray. Pat Preston, for Pat Lucy, for Sue Van Hoos, for Bill Bob Callahan, for David Campbell, for Bill Tom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, for those who are facing trials that are yet to come, we ask that you be with Carter and his surgery. Lord, that you would guide the surgeon and that you would give peace to Carter as he prepares for this time. God, heal him quickly and that he might be restored to life. For Carter, as he undergoes this surgery, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we do not know the right words sometimes, and we stumble over ourselves, and we forget, uh, and we can't pray. And God, you have still not left us alone. You have given to us the words that we need to lead us. And so, Jesus, pray for us now as we lift our voices together, praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue in prayer, hymn 405. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Our first scripture uh, lesson this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. It can be found on your pew Bibles on page 1,189. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also, as living stones, are being built up as spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices accepted to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, 
and he who believes on him will be no, by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into him, into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we look into our hearts and obey his word, we invite you to give generously as we worship God through sharing our tithes and offerings and our gifts. Let's pray. Father, as we place these financial offerings before you, we also give you all that we are and everything you have entrusted to us. Please bless and multiply these gifts for your kingdom. Amen.
came from heaven to earth to show the way. On this fifth Sunday of the season of Easter, as Easter people, we center our hearts together around following Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. And we turn to John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14, in your pew Bibles on page 1059. If you're able, let's stand together today in honor of the reading of the gospel. The word of the Lord speaks to the living of our lives today. John writes, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. Beloved, this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ Jesus. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we thank you for these words of life that lead and guide and direct us today. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, for your abiding dwelling place here with the people of God. God, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts would be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, you are our rock 
and our Redeemer. In Christ's name we pray today. Amen. You may be seated. Distraught disciples filled with questions. Most of them are unanswered, anxious about the unknowns of the future, overwhelmed with griefs, great and small, because everything they've invested their lives and hopes in seems to be falling apart. Fear of abandonment. We've been there. Maybe we're there now, but at one time or another in our lives, we know these deeply distraught disciples. We know them because we are them. And we found ourselves experiencing something that left us distraught. Something that left us anxious, grieved, fearful, or all of the above and all at once. And in this discourse between Jesus and his disciples, we're rewinding a bit to the upper room in the Easter narrative where Jesus has just finished washing his disciples' feet. And they're preparing to share together in the Last Supper, just as we are preparing our hearts here today to come to the table of the Sacrament of Holy Communion. And Jesus has told the disciples what is ahead for him. And he's given them the new commandment to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. Jesus and the disciples have been doing hard things together, and it is going to get harder. I love the way that Jesus doesn't say, your hearts aren't going to be troubled. Everything's going to be fine. As a matter of fact, just a few chapters later, Jesus says to his disciples in the 16th chapter of John in verse 33, he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And he promises them, in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. So Jesus knows of the trouble. He warns of the trouble that's coming. And he says tenderly to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am going to prepare a place for you, an abiding place for where I am. There you may be also. And Thomas asked the very practical question saying, Lord, we don't actually know where you're going. So if you could give us a road map or some better directions or some clue of how we can get there. And then Philip, ever focused on the big picture, says, show us proof of God. And that's all we need. That's all we really need in these hard times. Clarity for our doubt. In the prophetic words of the 80s band White Snake, one of my favorite songs, I don't know where I'm going, but I sure know where I've been. You all know that one? Hanging on the promises and the songs of yesterday, and I've made up my mind. I ain't wasting no more time. Here I go again. Here I go again. Except... We don't go alone. We don't go on this walk alone because Jesus goes with us to the places he has already gone and already overcome. We know the way when we believe. We know the way when we trust God in the hard places. We know the way when we love God and we love our neighbors. And as followers of the way, we understand, or at least we seek to understand, that we have a place with God, a dwelling place with God. We know the way because Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth and the life. And this, beloved, is what gives us confidence. Not because we get the road map we want on how to make make it through these hard seasons of life, not because we get proof of God or clarity of how our world and church will be different in the future. No, we have confidence because we put aside our fear. We find our courage because we already know the way. And we believe the love that Jesus demonstrates is more powerful than any evil that the world can throw against him. For who we are and what will become of us and our world is not up for grabs. 
Do you hear that? The world doesn't own us, and it doesn't own Jesus. For the powers of death have no power over God. And God has made a covenant to reconcile the world and all that is in it. And that includes the distraught disciples and you and me and all who have found themselves living in times of troubled hearts. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. That's how we counteract that with our belief in God. Believe also in me, in Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Take heart, take courage, Jesus says, for I have overcome the world. May it be so for us today as we come together to celebrate the Lord's Supper, this meal of bread and vine. Let's pray together. O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We pray this day that we may come to a clearer understanding that you have more interest in our character than in our comfort. Where we have need of correction, speak plainly to us and grant us the courage to make the changes that you would bring into our lives today. May the love we express for you on this Sunday morning continue throughout this coming week. Strengthen this congregation, we pray, in order that we may become more effective in our ministry, in our service, and in our witness to the community. In the name of Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. You would join me in your hymnals on page 12 as we prepare our hearts together to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. Surely Peter had experienced the goodness of God. Peter who laid down his fishing nets and followed Jesus. Peter who didn't want Jesus to wash his feet, but the fear of denying Christ brought him to complete trust and humility. Peter who then denied knowing Jesus and heard the curdling sound of the rooster crowing, but then heard the tender voice of the good shepherd welcoming him back into the fold and calling Peter to feed his sheep. Peter, in whom would be the rock that Christ builds his church upon, writes to the church, and out of his experience, he echoes the invitation of the psalmist to taste and see for yourself. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Have you ever had something in your fridge that maybe you thought had gone bad? Sometimes we get a container of milk, and instead of tasting it myself, I, I'll hand it to James and I'll say, does this taste bad to you? <laughs> we can't invite people to taste what we ourselves aren't willing to stomach. And so taste this today. We can't invite the world to taste and see the goodness of God if we've left a bad taste in their mouths, giving them spoiled milk. Taste and see, beloved. Is good. The scripture that Mary read is so important for us today before we come to the table. I wanted to share Eugene Peterson's message paraphrase. He says, So clean house, make a clean sweep of malice and pretense, make a clean sweep of envy and hurtful talk. You've had a taste of God, and now, like infants at the breast, drink deep of God's pure kindness. Then you'll grow up mature and whole in God. Taste and see. God is good. And so Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who desire a clean sweep today, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. And so we confess our sin to God and to one another. On page 12, merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. We confess now to the Lord who hears our hearts, who knows our sins, and who welcomes us. He redeems us. And hear the good news that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love toward us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Friends, as forgiven and reconciled people of God, I want to invite you now to stand and to turn and to welcome one another here in the body of Christ with signs of peace and reconciliation and love as we turn and greet one another in the peace of Christ. as you are standing, let's affirm our faith together in the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we turn our hearts to the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. God, you have come and shown us the way. And we believe that you are the way and the truth and the life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name. And we join their unending hymn, singing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. We remember that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took the bread and he blessed it, And he gave thanks to God the Father. And he gave this bread to his disciples and he said, Take of this one loaf and eat from it. This is my body that is broken for you. The bread that you break and eat today is a sharing in the body of Christ. And likewise, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he gave thanks to God. And he said, Take this cup and drink from it, all of you. The cup that you bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. As often as you drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And so, 
in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in peace, in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the holy mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here and on these gifts, O oh God, of bread and vine, and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the taste of Christ, the body and blood of Jesus, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, O oh God, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, Christ, who was whole, who was fully God, allowed himself to be broken so that we might know the fullness of the love of God and we might be made whole. And Christ, who was fully God, allowed himself to be emptied on the cross that we might know the fullness of the love of God in communion with the Holy Spirit. This table is an open table that all are invited to today. You don't have to be a member of this church or United Methodist to come. You have come today seeking God and seeking the kingdom of God. And so come today and taste and see that God is good. We have uh, individual cups for those who would prefer that method of communion today. Uh, we'll break off a piece of, the piece of the bread. I'm gonna invite James, if he would, to come and to help me serve today. Um, and you can take a piece of the bread, just come ready and holding your hands out to receive the body of Christ. And then you can either dip it in the cup or you can take one of the individual cups. We also have the pre-filled cups today if you prefer that method of communion today and gluten-free wafers as well if that's a need for you. Uh, but this table is open. It is yours to come and yours to feast upon. Christ is present with us. Come as you feel led today.
Let's pray together the prayer in your bulletin eternal God we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us grant that we may go into the world to give ourselves the spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord amen our hymn of invitation today is to go forth in victory as those who know the old, old story, as, as, those, yes, as those who have tasted and seen of the goodness of God. And before we sing, I want to invite Barb uh, to come and to share a word as chairperson of our Staff Parish Relations Committee. Um, I'm honored to be the chairperson, um, however, this is a horrible time for somebody to be the chairperson. Because as you know, Amy is going to be leaving us. Uh, she has accepted a job as an associate pastor at the Christ Church in Louisville. So um, she, along with her beautiful family, will be greatly, greatly, greatly missed. But this past Monday, the SPR committee met with Brad Smart, and for those of you who do or don't know, he is our district superintendent. And <clears throat> he, told, he told us that he, along with other DS and the uh, bishop, have, have come up. <clears throat> and, oh, by the way, that is called the cabinet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they've decided that Mayo will become a two-point church, or charge, rather, excuse me. Now, that means that one or more churches um, uh, will retain a licensed minister and is appointed as the pastor in charge. Okay. We are still Mayo Church, nothing has changed. So, um, it was also decided by this committee that Tyler Brumfield will uh, become the pastor in charge. He is the pastor over at first, and he will be the pastor in charge over here. It does not mean a merger with first. Okay, so what's really exciting about this, we already know Tyler. He is no stranger to Mayo. He has come, filled in uh, at the last minute, um, and, and did a beautiful job. Um, he's also been very active with VBS, and also in the community choir that we have between the two churches. So he is absolutely no stranger to us all. And um, I know that, um, that we're all going to welcome him, uh, along with his wife, Taylor, their son, Ben, and soon-to-be new baby into uh, the Mayo family. 
and I have no doubt that we are going to welcome him as we have done in the past to all our amazing pastors. And we'll welcome that family with open arms, with our love, respect, and give them a warm Mayo welcome. And that, uh, he'll be coming on the 18th? He's gonna join us for worship on the 18th. I'll still be here. She'll still be here, but he's gonna come join us, you know, uh, and, and we could show him how much we love him then. Um, I have no doubt that um, this, this church, my beautiful Mayo family, is going to welcome him. And, uh, I, and I am honored, even, you know, even though things are kind of, you know, but I am honored to be a member of this church. I've been, I've been going to this church ever since Lauren was, what, about one, Lauren? Two, Lauren, and I won't tell you how old she is because then you'll know how old I am. But anyway, I've been coming here a long time and I absolutely love this church. Not the building, mm -hmm. this church. This church of people here. And I, I am so excited that, well, first of all, I'm very happy for the Chapman family, but I'm excited that Tyler is now gonna be part of this church family. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. Thank you, friends. I love Pastor Tyler. He has been a dear friend to me. I love his family. My favorite is Ben. You are absolutely going to love Ben. And Ben's going to come here looking for Amy, and you'd better show him Amy. He's going to be looking, and he, he, he will love you all. Uh, and thank you for welcoming them. I know that you will love him just as much as I do. P uh, Tyler is an appointed elder in the United Methodist Church in the Kentucky Annual Conference. He is called and he is qualified. Uh, and he is fully equipped to lead well in this time of transition. And so I rejoice with you in this good news. Let's stand together as we go forth today. Sounds like into the, th into the storms. <laughs> Let's sing of the victory of, in Jesus Christ that we share together, hymn number 370.
Friends, you have heard about it. You have experienced it. You have tasted and seen. And so go and tell it and go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit go before you. Amen and amen. Thank you.